Figuring out how much your personal injury case will settle for can be confusing for many, but it does not have to be. This video is part three of my series on the 12 factors that can have a major impact on the settlement value of your personal injury claim. Now, one quick disclaimer, this video is not legal advice. It's for educational purposes only. If you have a question about your specific situation, talk to a lawyer. Now with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. Today we're covering factors number six and seven. Factor number six is the parties to the case. And what do I mean by that? Well, a party to a personal injury claim means the plaintiff, the defendant, or some third party that has an interest in the outcome of your case, like an insurance company. The plaintiff is the person bringing the claim. The defendant is the person who is allegedly responsible for the injury and they are defending against the claim. In many soft tissue personal injury cases, the defense will argue that the plaintiff had soft tissue injuries prior to the wreck in question in the situation of a car accident, or in a slip and fall, they'll say the same thing. That is known as a pre-existing condition, the pre-existing condition argument. Therefore, the argument goes, if a pre-existing condition is the result of the pain that this plaintiff is suffering, the defendant is not responsible for paying any of the medical bills or any damages for the pain that they're suffering. However, in many states, including Texas, the law actually allows you to recover damages, to recover money for pre-existing injuries under two circumstances. Number one, if the pre-existing injury was asymptomatic, meaning it did not cause any pain or symptoms, and then the wreck or the accident triggered those that, that pre-existing condition to become painful, you can recover for that. The second scenario where you can actually recover for a pre-existing condition is where the accident aggravated that condition uh, and made it go from painful to even more painful to worse. Now, when an MRI shows that a plaintiff who was involved in a wreck has some sort of normal wear and tear of the soft tissue in their spine, uh, often referred to as stenosis, uh, then the defense is going to latch onto that and say, look, they had issues with their spine prior to the wreck, and therefore we are not responsible for paying for that damage to their spine. Uh, however, uh, if the plaintiff says, yes, I may have had that condition before the wreck, but it did not cause me any pain, then in that case, that would be an asymptomatic condition turning symptomatic because of the wreck, and therefore the wreck is the reason why I'm having this pain now. So in that situation, uh, it's going to come down to how credible is the plaintiff who is saying that they had no pain before the wreck and that they're now experiencing these pain symptoms. And therefore, credibility of the plaintiff and the defendant, for that matter, can play a huge role in the settlement value of your personal injury claim. So let's talk about some of the factors that can affect or influence the credibility of uh, you as a plaintiff bringing a claim for a personal injury. Uh, number one is how consistent is your testimony about what happened and the pain that you had your life before and after the wreck? And what are other witnesses saying? Are, do, does it line up with what you are claiming in terms of how your life was, has been impacted by this, how you lived before the wreck and how you're living after the wreck? Also, how confident are you when you're answering questions? Can jurors identify with you? Can other people identify with your situation? That will play an important role. How clear and articulate are you about answering questions in a deposition or uh, when interviewed by a claims adjuster? What do you do for a living? Is it uh, something that is the community would hold in high esteem? Uh, are you humble? Are you likable? The list goes on and on. In fact, studies have shown that more physically attractive plaintiffs tend to get larger judgments in civil cases, and this might surprise you. Other studies have shown that physically attractive criminal defendants uh, are less likely, all other things being considered equal, they're less likely to be convicted, and even those who are convicted, if they're more attractive, physically attractive, they tend to get more lenient sentences. Uh, there are actual studies that show this. So now let's talk about factor number seven. Factor number seven is the outrageousness of the defendant's conduct in the accident situation. Again, I'm going to give you an example of a car wreck that I actually worked on. In situations where an accident was caused by extremely risky or outrageous conduct on the part of the defendant, the value of your case can greatly increase and you can actually seek what is known as punitive damages. 
Punitive damages refers to money that the defendant must pay the person who was injured as a punishment for their extremely risky, egregious uh, behavior. It's also designed to discourage the defendant from engaging in such conduct in the future and discourage other people from doing that kind of behavior in the future as well. So my rule of thumb for deciding when somebody's behavior that caused an accident is egregious enough to warrant punitive damages, my rule of thumb is, does the defendant's conduct make me say, what on earth was he thinking? What on earth was that person thinking in doing that? That's kind of the rule of thumb for determining does it rise to the level of egregiousness needed to seek punitive damages? So what are some examples of uh, a situation in car wrecks uh, that may lead to a claim for punitive damages? Well, driving while drunk, especially if there's a history of it, uh, road rage, excessive speeding, hit and run. In one of my cases, in fact, uh, where we did in fact seek punitive damages, my client was just driving down the freeway, uh, minding his business, in his lane, paying attention, not speeding, and then meanwhile, at the same time, behind him was a guy in a BMW convertible with his buddy. He had just purchased that convertible. He was weaving in and out of traffic, according to other witnesses who saw the incident. And he was barely missing cars as he would move from lane to lane. Well, he came up from behind my client going much, much faster than the posted speed limit and just clipped my client on the highway at a high rate of speed sending him into a multi, multiple vehicle collision across the highway. It shut every lane of traffic down, and there was really bad uh, traffic damage. Well, to make matters worse in that case, the guy in the BMW, after seeing what he had done, causing that huge multiple vehicle pileup on the highway, he actually somehow remained unharmed in that and sped off, tried to flee the scene and avoid responsibility. Well, Luckily for us, there was a good Samaritan who was driving another car, saw the whole thing unfold, and followed the guy in the BMW and was able to write down his license plate and then give it over to the police at the scene of the wreck. Uh, had that good Samaritan not done that, we would not have even been able to find the person who caused the whole thing uh, and hold him responsible for what he had done. Now, that is a situation, given the hit and run and the extremely risky, swerving, driving on the highway, going excessively fast on the highway, faster than traffic, all of those facts added up in that case to uh, a claim for punitive damages. That was egregious behavior, and it no doubt raised, greatly raised the value of the settlement because that BMW driver's insurance company knew that if this case were to go to trial, the jury would be upset and angry with that BMW driver and would likely award them much more money, uh, award my client much more uh, money than what the insurance policy uh, even covered. And so needless to say, the insurance company did the smart thing and settled for the policy limits in that case. So that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, hit the like button below. If you don't want to miss my next video in the series on the 12 factors that can impact the personal injury settlement of your case, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and turn the bell notification icon on. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.